Greetings, YouTube. The doctor is in. Dr. Urius Papers here coming at you with another commentary on Dungeons and Dragons. And today we're going to go over the changes that are being made to the 2024 Sorcerer. We're also going to look at the 2014 Sorcerer. I'm going to rank each one of the changes on the scale that you see to your left from S to F. But I will also talk about what I think the impact of each one of these changes is going to have on game balance and particularly from like the dungeon master's perspective the rating is going to be from the player's perspective so as usual we've got our obligatory flavor intro paragraph plus we've also got our advertisement to buy the bundle because wizards want you to buy the bundle and then we've got uh the table that summarizes all the changes. We've got the picture. The picture is by Evan Fong. Looks very similar. It's a very similar style of art, of course, between these two pictures. Uh, these two look very similar to each other. Uh, maybe they're twin brother and sister. I don't know. So we'll have to see. And then below this, we've got the actual summary of all the changes that are happening. Okay. Spell casting at level one. So this is a kind of across the board change for all the different classes. Everybody prepares spells. And if you don't know what that means, look at the wizard in the old 2014. And that's what this means. There's a number of spells that you're able to prepare every day from your list. So the wizard prepares these out of their spell book. Whereas the cleric in 2014 prepared spells out of the list so um so you prepare a list of cleric spells that are available to you to cast you don't know spells you just prepare them out of a whole list i'm gonna guess that the the sorcerer is going to prepare spells but out of a list so you still edit your spell list when you level up and can only change one spell on your list at a time so maybe it's a combination of both. Um, the most significant change to spellcasting for sorcerers uh, in the PHB is they can prepare more spells than their 214 counterparts could learn. So here they are. You new spells. Uh, spells of first level. So spell slots, spell casting. You new spells, and that was based off of the table here. So you could know up to 15 spells. And then you had spell slots, and you cast your spells based off of the spells known. So I'm going to guess that now they can learn more spells, and then they prepare off of those. So in fact, once they reach level 3, sorcerers now prepare just as many spells as druids, bards, clerics, and wizards. Okay. Lastly, sorcerers can now change one cantrip when they level up. So this is in addition to swapping one spell from your prepared spell list. All right. This is new innate sorcery is a new thing with innate sorcery you can use your bonus action to surge in magical power for one minute last this thing lasts for one minute during that time your spell dc okay first off before i get into this let me say i'm just going to give the spell casting thing a c plus right down the middle it's not a bump it's i don't think it's really that much of a bump game balancing it's not really going to affect anything okay Back to innate sorcery. So you get this, use your bonus action, it powers you up for a minute. During that time, the save DC for your spells increases by one. That's pretty massive. And you have advantage on attack rolls for sorcerer spells, which is very massive. And you can use this twice per long rest. I'm going to give as a player. I like this a lot, especially if I'm going to combine this with something like heightened spell, which is still in effect. And got a huge buff, so we're going to talk about that. Um, so essentially, for a minute, I can heighten a whole person or a whole monster, which increases the DC by one. And if it's heightened, they get disadvantage. That that's all good. And for other spells, you know, where I'm going to be rolling an attack roll, I get advantage for an entire minute. That's a whole combat essentially. So that's massive. That's an A. Uh, is this going to overpower? I don't think the, the increase in the DC is overpowering the advantage. Eh, maybe. Maybe. We'll have to see. Um, it's giving people a reason to play sorcerers a lot more. 
And again, kind of the theme with a lot of these is that it's giving players an incentive not to dip into other classes very much, but to stay with one class and to try and get those higher level abilities. Like we talked about the Bard before, and and they really incentivize people to stay with the Bard class and not dip out. All right. Meta Magic at level two. So Meta Magic, the Sorcerer's Trademark feature, has seen some upgrades. You get now get this feature at level two instead of level three, uh, which for the Sorcerer here, we got Font of Magic, which was Spell Points. And um, you started with two. And then you got Meta Magic at three where you choose some. So I think all that stuff's going to happen at level two now. You learn two additional Meta Magics at levels 10 and 17. You can also change one meta magic option when you level up. Additionally, the two optional meta magic options introduced in Tasha's have now been incorporated in the core class. Six of the ten meta magic options were tweaked. If you don't see a meta, meta magic option in the list below, it remains unchanged, which means that quicken spell is unchanged. That's good. Very good to see that. Uh, and it sounds like the coffee lock is still going to be a viable class. So, careful spell. Uh, now protects your allies from taking half damage on a successful save, whereas before, careful spell just meant that they um, automatically succeed. But that means that they could take half damage. So, uh, that's an A I, I don't think that's going to affect game balance so much. That's a good. I think that's a good change that they made because careful spell was a little compared to the sculpt spell that was with the evocation wizard. I think that careful spell was a little underpowered. Should have been, in my opinion, about the same. Expen extended spell. You now have advantage on saving throws made to uh, maintain concentration on spells affected by this. Whereas extended spell extended the duration of the spell. So um, that has a duration of one minute or longer. Uh, you double it up to a maximum of 24 hours. So again, uh, not an a, from a player perspective, not really an A, but maybe a B. It, it, the, I don't think that came up very much. And, uh, you know, if you're doubling a spell that's from a minute to two minutes, are you really going to be concentrating on it? Well, you know, are you going to be doing that during combat? I don't really think so. So... Uh, and I don't think it's going to be a game balance changer either. They changed Heightened Spell. It now costs two sorcery points instead of three. Now also affects all subsequent saves a target makes against the Heightened Spell. That is an S. From a player perspective, that is an S. I use innate sorcery. I heighten a spell. It only costs me two sorcery points. I slam a whole person on you. And now you have disadvantage on every single saving throw that you have to make against that. You are probably going to fail your first save, and you're going to remain paralyzed for the three or four rounds it takes to finish a combat. Very overpowered, very superior, very much a high grade for that particular change alone means that the entire class got buffed with that just that change. And there's other things that we've already gone through that were buffed. So there's going to be a lot of coffee locks that are going to be taken heightened spell with innate sorcery and things like hold person. You know, there's all kinds of spells that we've gone over in the past that if you fail your save, it's bad, bad news and combat ending. So from a game balance perspective, uh, this is going to be like the Bard's counter charm. This is something that could break the game pretty, pretty massively. It is going to ensure that uh, players are going to be able to drop spells down. Now, on the other side of that, however, if a DM has a sorcerer, players need to beware because they're going to be failing a save. You know, they're going to target the fighter or they're going to target the barbarian, slap a whole person on them. They're probably not going to be able to make that save in the beginning and they're going to have a harder time later on. So, all right, Seeking Spells. Cost one sorcery port instead of two. You can still use Metamatic option even if you are using another spell. Uh, that got a bit of a bump. We're going to move that one down to a B. It's a little bit above average. Not really game-breaking. Subtle Spell now allows you to ignore material components as well as long as the material components do not have a spec cost specification and are not consumed. Again, 
that's a little bit of a bump. We'll give it a B. Nothing that is really going to break the game. Twin spell. This metamagic option now has been reconfigured. Now twin spell applies to spells that can be upcast to target an additional creature. So before twin spell was <clears throat> it had to be only one creature and doesn't have a range of self. Can spend a number of sorcery points equal to the spell's level to target a second creature in range. So um, it also costs one sorcery point. That's a big bump. Before, if I twinned a fifth level spell, it was going to cost me five. Five sorcery points. Now it only costs one. So, for example, if you are level 7, you can't cast Banishment at 5th level slot necessary to target another creature, but you can cast it at 4th level, spending 1 Sorcery Point to twin it. So that, that's, I don't think that's totally overpowering. However, however, there are options in here where you can cast 2 Metamagics on the same spell. So I'm going to give this one an A, but when you combine that with Heightened Spell which you probably can do later on, that's going to get a little out of hand. In addition, uh, with innate sorcery that we just talked about up here, you know, increasing the uh, DC on this is, is pretty nasty. Okay, so sorcerer subclass, and just remember, heightened spell is only affects one creature, one target, but that's neither here nor there. Okay. So now we've got the three subclasses. I was never really very um, enamored with the Sorcerer of subclasses. So here are our Sorcerer subclasses. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight different ones. They are talking about four here. Uh, hopefully more will get introduced. Wild Magic is still around. Aberrant, cl uh, Clockwork, Soul, and Draconic. The Divine one was pretty good. You could get some okay healing out of that, and I always liked Wild Magic. So um, we've got the Aberrant Mind. I was never impressed with this one. I thought this was one of the weakest ones. So, so they're doing some minor changes. Psionic spells can no longer be replaced with Divination or Enchantment spells. Pretty much that particular mechanic they're getting rid of from all of the subclasses. So I don't think Aberrant Mind needed to get a, a bump, a, a nerf, but it is. Telepathic speech is now more resilient. It does not drop if you are incapacitated or dead. Who cares? Psionic sorcery no longer affects material components that have a specified cost. Okay. Clot. So we are going to give that one. That one's just straight down the middle C+. It's not going to have any effects on game balance. Clockwork sorcery uh, underwent two changes. From Tasha's Cauldron of Everything, Clockwork spells can no longer be replaced with Abjuration and Transmutation Magic in line with what we saw with Aberrant up here. And Restore Balance is now tied to your Charisma modifier instead of your Proficiency bonus. If we look here, that is where we could take advantage away or disadvantage away. And we could use this a number of times in regard to Proficiency bonus, but what that means now is that if you start with a high a charisma modifier you're going to be able to use it more times a day earlier on than you would later on and i don't think it's a wash later on so it so that's a bump uh we'll give that a b for the for a, from a player perspective from a balance perspective i don't think it's going to really have any effect draconic sorcery i was never a big fan of the draconic sorcerer not never really a big fan of that they got they got an ancestor they got this resilience they got dragon wings Elemental Affinity, that was, you know, a little bump to damage, but nothing game-changing. So the Iconic Sorcerer subclass is significantly improved, granting new spells and stronger, more dragon-like features. You gain 10 additional spells as you level up, okay? And there weren't really any extra spells with this here. So it looks like there's going to be some extra spells, including Command, Fear, Charm Monster, and Legend Lore. Draconic Resilience new AC calculations include your Charisma modifier. So before it was 13 plus your dex. That's good. And a new Capstone feature, Dragon Companion, allows you to cast Summon Dragon, also known as Summon Draconic Spirit, once per day without using a spell slot. Okay, so again, I'm going to give this one a B. It's not great. It's not horrible. And it is not game-changing. Wild Sorcery. Wild Magic now triggers on a 20 instead of a 1. It's same, same chance. Doesn't matter. They just flipped it. 
And the Wild Magic Surge table has been reorganized, but its effects are all familiar. So I don't doesn't look like they changed it. They just kind of rearrange things. Um, casting a spell after you using Tides of Chaos now automatically triggers a Wild Magic Surge. I actually like that. That adds a level of risk and a level of uh, chaos into what uh, the sorcerer is doing. Bend Luck now costs one sorcery point instead of two. If you are unfamiliar with Bend Luck, Bend Luck is one of my favorite abilities that the sorcerer gets. So that means you take a D4, and you can add or subtract that number from an ability check, a saving throw, uh, so or an attack roll. And the big one is a saving throw. When you plop this that feature down, which now only costs one sorcery point instead of two, when you plop that down on top of heightened spell and innate sorcery, it, that one becomes very powerful. So we're going to move... The Wild Magic Sorcerer up to an A. Uh, again, that combination of those three things is, is going to be a little game-breaking. Um, and then the subclasses, new capstone feature, Tame Surges, allows you to trigger Wild Magic sur effect of your choice once per day. That doesn't happen until, I guess, like, what is it, 18th level? Um, you... E Controlled chaos was what it was before, and you could roll twice. So, um, okay, so that one, that one's a, a bit much. Sorcerer restoration at level five. Once per day, you can regain expended sorcery points equal to half your sorcerer level rounded down on a short rest. So, if you have eight, you get four. If you have nine, you get four. So now when the party asks, when the warlock asks for a short rest, you'll get something to consider when you use this feature. And they just kind of give some scenarios. This is pretty good. I, You know, I'm, I'm not going to give it an A. We'll give it a B plus. That's pretty good. It's a little something extra to get um, sorcery points. Again, if you're a sorcerer and a warlock, it doesn't really matter. It's just an extra way. Sorcery incarnate level 7. Uh, so your innate sorcery gets more powerful. With Sorcery Incarnate, you can regain the use of Innate Sorcery by spending two Sorcery points. In addition, Innate Sorcery now allows you to use up to two Mana Magic options on a spell. So, Twinning Heightened, Hold Monster, Bad News. Quickened Heightened, Hold Monster, Bad News. So, again, this one is an S. That's an S for the player. Uh, so if you're going to use your innate sorcery, um, then you're increasing the DC of the spell. You're flipping down uh, Tides of Chaos from your wild magic. You're now giving them a penalty. You're heightening it. Now all their saving throws are at disadvantage. And then you are quickening it, which means I get another spell of some, like a cantrip. Okay, very bad. Uh, epic boon. Um, after you make an attack or magic action, you can teleport up to thirty feet. Okay, got it. That's that's. We're gonna give that uh, just right down the middle, C plus, because it that's great. You get to move for free. It's not overpowering. And then lastly, we've got Arcane uh, Apotheosis. So uh, it's another bump in this innate sorcery. You can use one mana magic option per turn. So remember, Arcane innate sorcery lasts for one minute. You can use one mana magic option per turn without expending sorcery points. If you're using multi multiple mana magics on a turn, be sure to make the most expensive one free. Of course, like Heightened Spell or Quicken Spell, they're right about that one. So I go Heightened Spell, that's free, and then I go Twin, and I have to pay for that one. And that's every turn. Option per turn, not per your turn, per turn. 
I don't know if they meant to say that. So this feature also grants a more strategic flexibility. For example, if you're headed into an important battle low on spell slots, you might normally hesitate to spend sorcery points to create new slots because you also want to use metamagic during the upcoming fight. Well, just be a couple of levels in Warlock and you'll be good. Um, but if you know that Arcane uh, Apotheosis will allow you to use some meta magic for free, then you can do some swapping. Okay, so all in all, I think this is a pretty big bump and buff to the Sorcerer. It is really going to um, it's really going to encourage people to to play the Sorcerer. It's going to really encourage people to play the wild magic sorcerer, and it's really going to encourage people to play a wild magic sorcerer that goes all the way to level 7 at least. All right, that's what I got for everybody today. I appreciate everybody tuning in, and I will catch everybody later.